Hello everybody! In today's video, we're going to be unboxing this Bachmann's Branchline Model Railways Class 24-0 diesel electric locomotive. So we bought this locomotive at a UK-based model railroading site called Rails of Sheffield. Rails of Sheffield really have some very interesting and very, I think, high quality uh, model locomotives there. And uh, we've really been into the British diesel electric locomotives recently. So this is our fourth addition to our collection. And so we ordered this in late March and here it is uh, about April 8th. And uh, yeah, it just came in the mail. So we're gonna give it an unboxing. Now we paid about 123 pounds for this. I'm not sure what that translates to in American dollars, but I think it's fairly comparable. But um, yeah, at any rate, um, let's take a look at the box. So just to take a quick uh, look at the box. The box is, this locomotive is actually quite nicely packaged. I mean, it's not only functional packaging, but it's really good looking packaging as well. So this is bachman.co.uk. So that's a UK based website. And the back of the box is nice because it has a, a brief history of the Class 24 uh, written right on the back. So you get a little bit of an education here when you order uh, these types of locomotives here from, uh, from Bachman. All right, let's get to unboxing. So this boxing here, it's a box that's kind of slid into a sleeve. So um, that's kind of a nice little packaging detail. And then there's that kind of uh, blister pack type of plastic packaging inside this kind of framed uh, cardboard box that's you know slid into that sleeve so um, yeah very attractive packaging here now the blister packaging just slides right out of that right out of that insert there so there's the the blister packaging there it looks like there's a uh, um, some accessories there there's a little envelope in there if you can see that on the top there so this may require some assembly and I think in the box, there's a little instruction packet in there as well. There's a few things in there. Yep, there's uh, where all the little parts go. And you can join the Bachman Collectors Club <laughs> if, uh, if you want to. We don't, we don't belong to the Bachman Collectors Club, but I suppose we could join if we wanted to. All right, as we continue unboxing here, speaking of sleeves, there's actually a that's a, a molded plastic insert into a plastic sleeve there. So this thing is quite well packaged. All right, as we continue along here, we've got the little accessory pack sitting right on top of the plastic. Not really an accessory pack, it's the parts to the, the assembly parts there. And then basically what you do is you just flip up this little uh, thing here and then everything kind of folds away or unfolds. And there you go. And it just lifts right out. We're usually very delicate with these things because when you first pull them out of the pack, you just don't know. Um, you know, unless you've done these same types of packaging over and over, this is the first time here. So we're just kind of feeling our way through and we want to prevent damaging the locomotive by handling the packaging. So uh, yeah, yeah, that is a really nice looking locomotive on first glance here. So we'll definitely don't worry about his hands being in the way. We're gonna throw this up on the turntable and give it a nice detailed look. And you'll see, that's just your first view right there. 
right, so now that we have it unboxed, um, what we're going to have to do is do a little bit of assembly here before we uh, give it a spin on the turntable. So like we said before, it did come with this little baggie of parts. And um, yeah, these are just like little loose, delicate things here. There's some steps, there's some air, air lines, vacuum lines, um, things like that. Uh, so we'll have to press those into place. And then, um, yeah, then we'll be ready to go. So here's the instructions, they're pretty simple. Um, again, I don't think you, hopefully we won't have to glue these things. They'll, they'll stay in by tension um, or by friction. So uh, yeah, and then there's the, if you wanted to do DCC, um, there's some instructions there to put in the um, decoder and then some lubrication instructions and things like that. So as long as we got the pamphlet open, we might as well show you uh, what's all included here. So, all right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a little bit of assembly and then we're going to take it on the turntable for a detailed look and then we'll take it for a run on the layout. The British Railways Class 24 is a diesel-electric locomotive manufactured by the British Railways at the Derby Works, the Darlington Works, and the Crew Works. They were made between 1958 and 1961, and 151 units were produced. The Class 24s were also referred to as the Sulzer Type 2. Sulzer is a Swiss company that was actually founded in 1775 and still exists today. They have produced a lot of things over their long history, but one of those things were diesel engines and the Salzer diesel engine was used in the Class 24. The Class 24 had a few different liveries, or identifying designs, but the livery you're looking at here, with the green and small yellow warning panels, emerged in 1962, and were changed to full yellow ends in 1967. The Class 24s were withdrawn from service between 1967 and 1980. Four have been preserved, while the rest were scrapped. So, let's take a look at Bachmann's 00 scale British Railways Class 24 slash 0. Okay, so looking at the Class 24 here from the side, I think the first thing you'll notice here is that nice uh, British Railways green paint uh, paint color there. That's a really nice, uh, nice, looking, nice looking green. And you might also notice here, at least from the side view, you'll see it when we look at the top, but the top is a kind of a gray roof there, and that green and that gray go together really good. Um, below here, you'll see the black trucks. This is all plastic construction. And uh, yeah, you can see the trucks with the with all the kind of the mechanics stamped into the plastic, really nice. Get the tanks there in the center. Um, get some ladder work here going up into the cab with those uh, silver painted handholds there by the cab, on either side of the cab door. You've got lots of vent work down here through the body of the uh, locomotive. And you've got a little stripe across the bottom there. Uh, really nice looking here. You'll notice that this particular model here is number D5036. So when these uh, Class 24s were made, they were numbered uh, D5000 through D5150. So again, this is 5036 in that number sequence. And in profile here, you can see the red buffer posts and the, and the black buffer pads there. Um, but uh, yeah, now one thing here, you'll see this little decal here that says British Railways and there's a little coat of arms in there. Uh, we'll try to zoom in on that and give you a picture of that. But that's really hard to read, but if you hold the magnifying glass to it, it certainly says uh, British Railways and you can clearly see that coat of arms. So that is a nicely, uh, that's a nice detail there that um, really holds up on close scrutiny. So uh, yeah, this is a pretty, pretty nice looking locomotive. Why don't we give it a turn? If I didn't mention it, it's about eight inches long. All right, looking here from the front, you can see uh, the windshields here, you got that uh, two on, or one on each side here, kind of with the slanted windows, because that roof is a curved, semi, kind of a semi-curved roof. And you can see the windshield wiper features are stamped into the, into the plastic, and it's got a little center rectangular window over the top there. Uh, probably the most prominent feature here is this, um, what they call the small yellow warning panel here. 
Um, that's with this livery here. These were later expanded to cover the whole front. And there's pictures online that you can look at um, if you're curious as to what those look like. Again, we get that red buffer beam back there. And then the pads you can see here from the front. And uh, yeah, you can see some little, uh, little mechanical details in here or, or rather kind of structural details. Uh, this locomotive here, when you see it on the run, you'll see that it has lights. And these lights are pretty cool because there are yellow lights uh, in front when the, uh, when the locomotive is in operation. And then in the rear, those lights are a couple of red lights. And then if you switch directions on the locomotive, those lights will switch so that the yellow lights are always facing in the direction of travel and the red lights are always uh, in the back. So we'll see that a little bit later on. And then really kind of the only other detail here you'll see is that this, we've got the um, hook and loop coupler up there up front or back, depending on which way you're looking at the locomotive. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, let's give it a turn and check out the other side. There's your nice three quarter view there. It's almost a mirror image of the opposite side, but not quite. There are things there, the symmetry is off here. It looks basically the same, but you'll notice here that the uh, British Railways logo is at the other end. Um, there are some roof features that, you know, it's not completely symmetrical from side to side. So it's not 100% identical on either side, but it's pretty darn close. So there's not a whole lot new to go over here, but um, yeah, just to give you a look at that side. So let's continue around. And you can see here from the back, we've got almost the same kind of configuration here. So the front and the back look pretty much the same, uh, same color scheme, and red buffer beam and all that stuff. So there's not a whole lot different here either, uh, but just to give you a look at both sides and both ends. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the top and the bottom. All right, looking at the top here, you can see we've got uh, the exhaust fan here. We've got the grill work and you can see the fan underneath. Uh, kind of past that grill work there. Hopefully the camera will be able to get a shot of that. And then you can see some other panel work here. Um, there's some bolt work, rivet work, uh, whatever would be used there. So you get lots of, lots of detail up there up top. I'm not sure what all those panels would access or what they're all for, so I can't really get into that. But just to give you a look at the top and let you appreciate the detail. All right, let's take a look at the bottom. All right, so looking at the bottom here, you can see it's uh, pretty plain down here. There's not a, a ton of modeling detail, but that's fine. You don't really see the underside of it anyway, but you can see the two sets of trucks here. Um, those are two axle trucks, you know, four wheels on each truck. And they're obviously metal for connectivity reasons. Um, that's kind of pointing out the obvious, but in the interest of thoroughness. Um, yeah, so uh, the Kind of the standout features here are these little switches right here on the very bottom. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. And um, those two switches are to turn on or off the, run, um, you know, the running lights on the, uh, on the locomotive at either end. So one switch there, the number one switch does the fan end of the uh, locomotive and you know you can control the lights that way there the other switch the number two switch does the non fan end so we'll be running it with the lights on just to just for demonstration purposes but just so you know you can use these two switches here to control the lighting at either end of the locomotive again one switch for one end the other switch for the lights at the other end uh, the other thing I wanted to point out too is that this is while this is a um, we're running this DC. You can also add a DCC decoder here as well. And the way you access the, uh, you know, the locomotive to do that is if you kind of turn these trucks here a little bit, you're going to see a screw right there, right underneath the truck wheel if you turn the trucks a little bit. And um, you can remove, I think there's two for each truck. And then there's another screw at the end over here. This is all in the instructions. So if you don't see the screw, that's fine. Um, but you can see there's a screw down at that end and there's one at the opposite end. 
you remove those screws and then you can remove the body to get into the um, into the compartment so that you can add your DCC uh, decoder um, that way. So yeah, it's all, again all in the instructions. I just want to give you a look at like what you might be looking at as far as where the screw locations are and things like that. Um, but that is the bottom of the locomotive. So let's give it one more turn on the turntable before we take it out on the layout. Now we gave a brief history of the Class 24 during our introduction, but you know, we're not railroad historians by any stretch of the imagination. And a lot of these locomotives have a more, you know, have a rich history, you know, and uh, variations and all that stuff. And I'm sure online there are lots of, um, you know, historians who specialize in railroads of the United Kingdom, UK, um, who can definitely elaborate on some of this stuff. So we encourage you with anything we talk about that has the basis in real locomotives. We definitely encourage you guys to get out on the internet and learn more about it. But uh, yeah, I think we're really going to enjoy this one. We've got a couple of these British, or we have four of these British diesels now, and uh, we like each and every one of them. Yeah, so for the price point, I think this is a pretty well detailed engine, and uh, we're really looking forward to using it.